I'm Dr. Emma Hitt Nichols, and welcome to this week's edition of the new FDA approvals podcast. This is just a short overview of the latest FDA approvals, and we're covering the week of June 19th through the 23rd, which is last week. And please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to do that, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. So there's been several approvals, updates this week. The FDA has approved Pfizer's Telzena or Palazoparib, their PARP inhibitor, in conjunction with Extandi and Zalutamide for the treatment of adult patients with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, MCRPC, with homologous recombination repair, HRR, gene mutations. Phase 3 Talapro 2 trial data showed a 55% risk reduction of disease progression or death in patients with prospectively identified mutations with this combination. Metastatic CRPC develops in about 10 to 20% of patients with prostate cancer within five to seven years of diagnosis. Approximately 25% of these tumors carry the HRR mutations for which this is indicated. And these mutations are linked to aggressive disease and poor prognosis. The safety of Talzena plus Xtandi in the Talapro 2 trial was generally consistent with the known safety profile of each medicine. Talzena is an oral inhibitor of PARP, which plays a role in DNA damage repair. Talzena is also approved as monotherapy for the treatment of adult patients with germline BRCA mutated HER2 negative, locally advanced, or metastatic breast cancer. Also last week, the FDA has granted accelerated approval to Sarepta Therapeutics Elevidis, the first gene therapy for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Elevidis is a recombinant gene therapy designed to deliver a gene that leads to the production of a shortened form of microdystrophin that contains selected dom- domains of the dystrophin protein present in normal muscle cells. The product is administered as a single intravenous dose. Duchenne muscular dystrophy predominantly affects males, causing muscle weakness, mobility loss, and premature death, usually by the second or third decades, due to heart and or respiratory failure. The FDA has approved this therapy for ambulatory pediatric patients aged four through five years with a confirmed mutation in the DMD gene. The placebo-controlled phase 3 MBOC trial of Elevidus will serve as the post-marketing confirmatory trial with top-line results expected in late 2023. According to an FDA news release, when making the decision, the FDA considered the potential risks associated with Elevidus, but awarded provisional availability due to the deadly nature of Duchenne and the limited number of available treatments. Also last week, the FDA approved Jardiance or Empagliflozin and Sinjardi, which is Empagliflozin with metformin hydrochloride, that's a combination, for use in children aged 10 or older who have type 2 diabetes. Jardiance and Sinjardi were originally approved in 2014 and 15, respectively, as supplements to diet and exercise to improve blood sugar control in adults with type 2 diabetes. The FDA approval is based on results from the Dynamo DINAMO phase 3 trial in which empagliflozin was associated with a significant reduction in the primary endpoint of change from baseline in HbA1c at 26 weeks compared with placebo, and the participants in that trial were aged 10 to 17 years. Type 2 diabetes currently affects more than 30,000 children in the U.S. and is expected to increase to 220,000 children by the year 2060, according to an FDA news release. Until now, the drug metformin has been the only other oral option available for the treatment of pediatric type 2 diabetes. Also last week, the FDA has approved Pfizer's Litfulo, which is known as Ritalcitinib, R-I-T-L-E-Citinib, a once-daily oral treatment for severe alopecia areata for individuals aged 12 and older. 
This is the first and only treatment approved for adolescents with this condition. Litfulo is a kinase inhibitor targeting Janus kinase 3 or JAK3 and the tyrosine kinase expressed in hepatocellular carcinoma, TEC, family of kinases. The FDA approval is based on data from the Allegro Phase 2B3 trial involving 718 patients. Of those treated with Litfulo, 23% had 80% or more scalp hair coverage after six months compared to only 1.6% with placebo. Common side effects of Litfulo were headache, diarrhea, acne, rash, and urticaria. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune disease that results in substantial hair loss and affects around 7 million people in the U.S. Litfulo is the second systemic treatment to gain approval after Eli Lilly's Illumiant, Baricitinib was approved in June 2022 last year for use in adults. According to a Pfizer press release, Litfulo is expected to be available in the coming weeks. Also last week, the FDA approved Amgen's Supplemental Biologics license application for Blincyto, Blinatumumab, for the treatment of adults and pediatric patients with CD19 positive B-cell precursor acute lymphoblastic leukemia, B-A-L-L for short, in first or second complete remission with minimal residual disease greater than or equal to 0.1%. The approval is based on additional data from two phase three studies and converts the accelerated approval from Blincito to a full approval. Blincito is a bispecific T-cell engager or BITE that targets CD19 surface antigens on B-cells. According to lead investigator Dr. Elias Jabor with the MD Anderson Cancer Center, the FDA's decision to grant this full approval for blinatumumab further validates the use of this therapy in BALL with MRD present following a remission, and that's a strong predictor of relapse in this patient population. The FDA has approved a subcutaneous version of Argenix's drug Vivgart. The new version is called Vivgart Hytrulo and is available with subcutaneous injection rather than intravenously. Vivgart is indicated for generalized myasthenia gravis, GMG, in adult patients who test positive for anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies, which is about 85% of the total GMG population. The new combination... Vivgart Hytrulo includes Fgartigamod alpha FCAB, as well as hyaluronidase GVFC. The treatment is given in cycles of once weekly injections for four weeks. The approval is supported by results from the phase three ADAPT SC study, which showed a significant reduction in anti ACH antibody levels compared to intravenous Vivgart approved in 2021 for use in adults in patients with GMG. The FDA has granted approval to Bayer's Iopromide Ultravist injection, which is the first contrast agent indicated specifically for contrast-enhanced mammography. The Ultravist is designed to enhance the visibility of suspected or known breast lesions. The new imaging tool expands options for physicians, particularly when conventional mammography might not suffice. The American College of Radiology recommends contrast-enhanced mammography as an alternative to breast MRI for women with dense breasts starting at age 40 or younger based on other risk factors. Ultravist has a broad range of indications already, including cerebral and coronary arteriography and intravenous use for the evaluation of neoplastic and non-neoplastic lesions. And finally, this week, the FDA has denied accelerated approval for Intercept Pharmaceuticals drug, which is obeticolic acid, OCA. It's aimed at treating non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, which is a form of fatty liver disease. This is the second time the FDA has declined to approve this drug for NASH, a disease affecting 5% of U.S. adults, but has no approved treatments. The FDA rejected the drug in 2020, citing that its predicted effectiveness did not justify potential risks. In response to the latest rejection, Intercept announced it would cease all NASH-related investments and restructure its operations to focus on rare and serious liver diseases. 
Several companies, including Novo Nordisk Magical Pharmaceuticals and Acaro Therapeutics, are currently developing agents for NASH that, if approved, would be the first treatment for this condition. All right, that's it for this week. Please do check back every Monday morning for last week's approvals so you can stay up to date in your field, whatever it is. This podcast is for medical writers, medical science liaisons, pharmaceutical executives. Please tell your friends and colleagues about this if it might be helpful to them. And it would be great if you could review and you know, say good things about this podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Nascent Medical. If you're a project manager at a CME or medical communications agency and need on-call medical writing assistance, please visit our website at nascentmc.com. We're a team of MD and PhD level medical writers and can create slide decks, white papers, ad board summaries, manuscripts, needs assessments, and much, much more. We also do medical editing using AMA style and fact checking. Please visit nascentmc.com if this sounds of interest. And thank you so much for listening this week. I will be back next Monday, even though it's probably the July 4th weekend or something, but that's okay. I'll talk to you then. Bye.